Hey everyone, welcome. Today at the shop, I am gonna be installing this new Android Auto Apple CarPlay radio that I received from Stinger Electronics. The model number is the GX-3800. There's really not a lot of information about this radio online. It's brand spanking new. A lot of people haven't heard of Stinger Electronics. I will say right off the bat, this box leaves a lot to be desired. Um, so if you're thinking about getting this as like a holiday gift for somebody, uh, maybe you want to put a picture on it so they know what it is because you really can't tell what it is just looking at this box. But Stinger Electronics, they've been our uh, mobile electronics industry since 1988. And I've known them ever since I started in this business back in 2000. They are part of a parent company called Amp Global, previously known as Amp of America. And Amp Global distributes a lot of well-known brands in our industry, such as Pack Audio, which makes those preamp adapters that I love, as well as radio interface harnesses for, you know, GMs when you're retaining steering wheel controls, OnStar, that kind of thing for all different year makes and models. They distribute installation kits, dash kits, wiring harnesses, uh, power wire, you know, fuse holders, distribution blocks, all sorts of stuff. And they also have recently got into the head unit game a couple years ago, starting with their floating singleton units, the Elevate and the High 10. And the High 10, we, we recently installed one of those in a Wrangler a couple of months back. And I was actually really impressed with the quality of the product, the audio control, you know, had a 15 band EQ, really nice screen quality. Uh, very responsive, good in glare conditions. So I was pretty happy to see that they finally decided to make like a standard seven inch doubled in. I'm gonna get this unboxed and put on our display, get it wired up and we'll see what it's all about. All right, so let's get this open up and see what actually comes with it. One thing I noticed off the back, I always look at this stuff, made in China. There it is, right in the bottom. I always look at that stuff. Radio is one of these super shallow units so because there's no cd player it's mechless it will be nice and easy to fit in a lot of vehicle dashes oh, this is interesting no pigtail it looks like um so a lot of installers when we're putting things in cars or even just on our display we like to have detachable pigtail harnesses so that we can get the wiring prepped on a bench before actually having to put it in the car um so that's kind of inconvenient. We'll have to look up and see what this is for. DVR video input. Well, that's kind of cool. I didn't know it supported that. Oh, and it has steering wheel control wiring built in. That I find really interesting because when I talked to my uh, rep about this the other day to find out, you know, if it supported steering wheel controls, he told me to use the SWI CP5, I believe it was, and set it to Pioneer but it looks like for certain cars that are not CAN bus, that this would support steering controls on board. That, that's a really good value, I like that. And you got your reverse wire, parking brake, and another steering control wiring. I think that's if you are gonna be using the external steering control module. And then we've got our microphone input, we've got our USB input. What else have we got on the back of here? Looks like it's used in a Volkswagen style plug, 15 amp fuse. You got front, rear, and I believe there's a subwoofer pre-out on here too. That's what I read. You got a couple of video inputs and outputs. So it looks like two, well, one dedicated camera input, one dedicated video input, one video output. This is like an aux input, audio, video, left and right, AV input. It's a really sleek finish. You don't have any hard buttons on here. If I take this off, there's actually a little cheat sheet for the wiring on it. Oh, there's a subwoofer. Oh, mono subwoofer. There we go. So you're gonna have to use a Y adapter if you're gonna use that subwoofer for you. All right, let's see what we got in box number two. Trim ring. So if you are gonna be using this mounting sleeve, this would be helpful in a few applications like uh, 2000 to 2006 Volkswagen Jettas are just gonna have like a standard doubled in. But unless you get the Metro mounting kit, you don't really have anything to hold the radio in the dash. So this would be helpful on that. There are some installation kits that do require a sleeve like this because they're not gonna be ISO mount. Information on the steering wheel controls. So if this is referring to if you are using that SWI CP5 or SWI RC. These are the dip switch settings that you're gonna want if you are gonna use that external steering wheel control 
interface. I, I think you're really gonna have to use that if you're using a car that's got CAN bus for the steering wheel controls. If you have, say, like a 2011 Toyota Corolla, there's really nothing fancy going on in those steering wheel controls in a car like that. You should be able to use the built-in steering controls. And this is just like a quick user guide. Just your wiring, microphone, removal keys, if you are gonna use that sleeve and trim ring. I'm gonna get this opened up and I'm gonna take off uh, one of the radios that we have on display so I can make room for this and we'll get it installed and check it out. All right, so I'm gonna take this radio out of the display and move in this just to another display wall where I have a XAV AX1000. It's actually my last Sony that I have in stock because of the chip shortage. So we're just gonna shuffle some radios around so I don't have any empty holes. I hate that. I hate having holes in display. I think it just looks really bad. And I'm just gonna take this whole thing out so I can work on it on the counter or the floor, not sure where yet. Ooh, I might get lucky. This actually has a similar Volkswagen style plug. I might not even have to rewire that connection. We'll find out. This is the harness that came with the new radio. This is the harness that I had on that power acoustic radio. And you can see this is the same thing. It's like a 1784 harness. So what I'm gonna do is just reuse this harness from the power acoustic with the Stinger radio. And then I'll use this when I wire up the power acoustic. All right, moment of truth. Woo, starting multimedia. That's certainly a long startup time. So what I was just doing guys is I was listening to this track on the Kenwood DDX 57S and this new Stinger slash Grundig GX-3800. And I have to say, I was really impressed with the sound quality of this new piece. Uh, I have everything set flat on both units. The imaging, I have to say, was a little bit better with this guy which I was really surprised because I absolutely love Kenwood. Now, within the Kenwood lineup, this is one of the more, I'd say, entry-level units. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles as far as EQ control. We don't have Supreme in this one. So, you know, if I had a Kenwood that did have that Supreme setting, maybe I'd have a different answer for you guys. But if we're comparing, you know, entry-level CarPlay Android Auto head units with four volt preamp output, then this GX3800 is a really great option to consider. All 
All right, guys, so after looking at this user interface, this clearly isn't a Stinger radio, and the box said Grundig. So looking into it, Grundig is actually a German audio manufacturer that I had never heard of, but apparently they've been in business since 1945, and they don't just make consumer electronics like this, but they also make refrigerators, you know, washing machines, dishwashers, all sorts of consumer electronics. So I guess they're huge over in Europe. And so this is a European radio is basically being imported and sold through Stinger. And that is one reason this radio is not Sirius XM capable, right? So you're just gonna have regular FM AM radio, no SAT capability. And it is gonna be that wired connection for your Apple CarPlay Android Auto. It does also have Bluetooth. So if you do want to stream your music, you could use the Bluetooth streaming functionality right there. It does have an audio video input analog, as you guys saw on the back. If you had a rear seat entertainment system, right? Like a flip down DVD monitor from the ceiling, you could pipe the audio video output from that into this. That'd be good if you have little ones in the back seat and you wanna be able to play it for a front passenger and play it through the speakers in the car. The phone mirror feature, that is cool. I did do a separate segment on that. Phone connectivity, there's an option to basically turn CarPlay on or off and or Android Auto on or off and do mirroring. But this doesn't have a HDMI input, so it's gonna be doing the mirroring through the USB. So I was like, all right, let me try it. So I did that, I turned the mirroring on, I connected my phone and it asked me to unlock my phone. Look at that, it's mirroring my phone. I'll play something, turn this down just in case of copyright stuff. But you do have to get the phone in the right orientation. And there is a little bit of a border going on. And you do have to keep the phone open. If I close this, phone is in sleep mode, please wake up your phone. So unlike an HDMI, it's not gonna play with the screen closed. So. Kind of a neat feature, but not sure how many people will use that. Now, in terms of like the user interface, if you're you know using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, that's gonna be the same on whatever radio you go with. As far as when you're on that regular FM and AM in this particular stereo, you have a list of all your presets right here. It's easy enough to set a preset. You can either tap this to go to the next strongest channel, or if you press and hold, you can go one by one. So if I wanna set that, I can press and hold. Now that's preset number two. So that's pretty straightforward. If you wanna go between your different bands, you tap your FM button down here and keep tapping that and you'll get to AM. So it does have quite a bit of presets for those of you that do listen to regular radio, but I do think the graphics leave a little bit to be desired. If I back out of here, I just wanna show you guys all the sound control because it does have a ton of audio control. So let me hit that home button again, go to audio. You have a 13 band EQ, which is fantastic. A lot of people will see this and they can be overwhelmed, but basically think of this, if I were gonna, you know, broaden this out to like a three band EQ, you're 62 to 400, that's like your base frequencies, right? Or really 62 to 250 are like your base frequencies four, to four, that's gonna be like your mid, and then 6.3 to 16, that's like your treble, if this were like a three band EQ. But if you're gonna actually really do a great sounding system and you wanna play some pink noise, put it through that through an RTA, you need those fine increments so that you can actually go in and say, okay, you know, I have too much of 250 in this car. You don't wanna have to adjust the whole frequency band here with the three band EQ. So that's where having those individual bands really lets you fine tune it so you can get that perfect sun lounger look on your RTA when you're using pink noise. It does also have your digital time alignment. So you can go in here and delay the closest speakers so they all hit you at exactly the same time. Love that when it's set up properly. You do run into phasing issues if you don't do this correctly. So really take the time to measure from where you're sitting to each speaker, do the calculation so that you get that dialed in perfectly with no phasing issues. If you have good speaker placement, may not be necessary. So that's just an option you can use. Also built-in crossovers, love having that feature. So if you're building your system in stages, which a lot of my clients do, right? You start with the head unit, next to your amp and sub, 
then you do your speakers, then maybe you do an amp on your speakers. When you're doing it in phases like that, you can tell your interior speakers just play mid and treble and call all the bass out to those. Well, not all the bass, but most of the bass. So you can filter it out using your high pass filter. And that's gonna allow even your stock speakers to play just a little bit louder, a little bit clearer, because not trying to reproduce those lower bass frequencies that we're letting the subwoofer handle. So having that kind of control is fantastic. And then this is a really cool feature. So I just turned that virtual sub on and off and I am blown away at what that does. It's not like a bass boost that you hear on most head units that's jacking everything up. It really boosts the frequencies that need to be boosted in the speakers to make it almost sound like, um, not the bass you get from like a 12 inch sub, but almost like the bass you get from like a stock amplified Bose system. You know, it's better than just having a six and a half inch speakers in the door. It was really, really impressive. Some people you're really gonna enjoy that virtual subwoofer. And then of course you have your standard, you know, fader control. This does appear to be like a glass capacitive touchscreen. This is cool. I'm glad that it has the park assist guidance lines that are adjustable. This DVR feature, I have a suspicion this is for a product that's only sold in Europe and an accessory that's not available here. Under display over here, we can adjust the dimmer. Sync usually means syncing with the clock. So if you don't actually have an illumination wire in your car to connect to, that's usually what you wanna leave it at. And there is some adjustments for the brightness to contrast. This is where you can either use one of the preset background images. The default is this kind of honeycomb picture. Then you have this kind of brushed aluminum look. And then this alpine-ish bluish background. Or you could upload your own, which I like. And then there's two different options for your home screen icons. I prefer this second one. So that is the one that I've left it on. There's another really cool feature that this head unit supports, and that is the built-in steering wheel control functionality, which I didn't realize it had until I opened it up, right? There's actually some preset options for a lot of Japanese vehicles. And then there's different ways to learn it. For a lot of people out there, this is gonna be a huge value, right? That separate steering wheel control part, that's a $100 part. If you have the type of car that's got analog steering wheel controls, you don't need something that will talk to CAN bus or considered digital, like a GM LAN network or something like that, then you're gonna be able to get away with using those built-in steering wheel controls. And when I say analog, non-digital, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, like a 2011 Toyota Corolla, an older Honda Civic, you know, something with just volume up and down, track up and down, mode, nothing crazy. And there's no, you know, electronics that are communicating in the car through the radio. So that's that's what I mean by analog for steering wheel controls. There's no types of communication systems like OnStar. For a lot of vehicles, that will be a great savings. For other cars that do have digital communications for the steering wheel controls, you'll still need to use that SDBI CP5 with this radio. This is the other thing I was really happy about, source level adjuster. Let's say you have a vehicle that has a stock amplified system like a Subaru with the Harman Kardon or a BMW with Harman Kardon, like a Volkswagen with a Monsoon, you know, older cars with basic amplified systems that are just speaker level and don't need anything fancy to integrate with the stock amp. In cars like that, you're retaining the stock amplifier, but you're basically also using the amp built into the radio. So you're kind of amplifying an amplifier. Unless you put something in to level match those two, then you are gonna find that it's almost too loud at lower volumes. Each little increment is drastic when you raise the volume. So like, for example, we had an Infinity, older Infinity, it was like a 1998, just a couple of weeks ago that we did an Alpine ILX W650. And we had to throw in an LP7-4, which is normally like a line out converter is how we usually use it, but it's adjustable. So we cut the RCA ends off and just did speaker level in and out and use that to basically turn down the output from that stock Bose amplifier. That's what this is doing. You can turn down the output internally on various sources so that you don't have this drastic increase in volume when you're using this in a stock amplified system. Overall, I think this is a great value. The sound quality, I was really impressed with. Definitely right up there next to Kenwood, JVC, Alpine, 
very clean. It is using a 24-bit D to A converter, so that's not too surprising. But you know, it's a brand I never really heard of before, so you never know really to what to expect when you try something new. And I was pleasantly surprised with the overall sound quality. So I'm pretty happy with this head unit. Um, I think that this is gonna be a great option for clients looking for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that wanna build a system, looking for something with a four volt with a 13 band EQ with crossovers. It, this is a really good platform to build a system with without a lot of bells and whistles. And with that steering wheel control module built in for a lot of cars in the market, that's gonna be a huge value. That would be like $100 savings right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I covered everything, all the questions you might've had. If not, please leave your questions in the comments below and I'll try to get some answers for you guys. If you enjoy this video, please help me out by hitting that like button. That really helps me out with the algorithm. We are trying to grow this channel and we are doing weekly videos on installation tips, product reviews, and also various installations that we get to do here at our shop in Brookfield. Sounds incredible mobile. So if you guys enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.